So code build is when um, you are pulling your code from code commit and then your code gets compiled, tested, and finally built. And then this code has to be pushed into some environment. And in this case, we're using an AWS managed environment to push our image. And then finally, we need to store that in artifact into uh, some repository. In this case, we're using the AWS S3 bucket. So now let's start with uh, creating our S3 bucket so that we have a location where we can finally push our artifact. So I go into S3. I'm going to create a new bucket. I have a bucket for an earlier project. Uh, can ignore that. Um, so let me say demo build one as the bucket name. And then the important thing is you have to be in the same region as where your code commit was, which is North Virginia. We keep that as is. If you have an another bucket, like in my case, I had for another project, I can give that name and it'll copy all of that existing content in here, which we're not going to do right now. So then click next. Um, you can keep most of these uh, as a default. If you want like additional information, you can start looking at this and then you can customize depending on if you want that. For now, we keep that as a default. I do next. I want to uh, expose this to the public for this demo and I'm going to uncheck this so that this bucket um, can be exposed to the public. And it does ask me about that and I say yes. Um, and then I, and then I finally create the bucket. So like you see that I have created my bucket here. So the next piece that we want to do is the code build. So let me go into code build. Um, so now I want to create a new um, code build project. So Let's do that. Um, I can explain to you as we go through it. Um, I'm just going to give a name for this. Um, code build project one um, demo for code build. Then we have the enable build batch. This is basically to say that once your code is built, you can post that URL into like a Slack or onto your own repository. Uh, we'll leave that as is for now. Uh, we're not going to uh, add any tags for this at this point. So the main thing is once we get into the source, it's going to ask you what repository you want to pick it from. So you see like it has code commit, GitHub, Bitbucket, all the other um, repositories. So we have our code in AWS uh, code commit. And I'm going to pick this project called Hello World because it's an um, uh, spring web uh, project I can show you uh, things when it changes on the um, web page so I'm picking this project called hello world um, and then uh, you also have your branch so I can say from which branch I want to pick uh, in this case we only have master so it picks the master branch and also it it's pretty cool it tells me the latest commit ID in that master branch and it is uh, test folder YAML. That's the change that I had made. And uh, now let's talk about um, environment. So um, in the environment, we have, like I said, AWS managed image and custom image. Custom image is basically if you have a repository like a Docker where you want to push your image to a Docker. But in this case, we want to use uh, the image that AWS provides. So we are going with um, the managed image. And then um, I'm going to pick up um, Ubuntu as um, the operating system uh, and then we keep this as standard um, the images um, i'm going to pick uh, 2.0 um, leave your latest images as is um, and then when we come into the service role we have a new service role that we want to create and um, we are not using an existing service role so I'm just going to call it service role, service role new. You can call it any name you want, but I'm just going to keep 
keep this for uniqueness. I'm just going to keep that as is. And then we have these additional configuration. I want to basically say that the timeout should happen after 10 minutes rather than an hour. Um, even with the queued timeout, um, I, I don't want it for eight hours. This build is pretty small. I'm going to keep it at 10 minutes. Um, I'm not installing any other certificates. Um, in terms of the memory, we can leave it as 3 GB. This build is not so big that you need additional memory, but if you feel that the mem you're running out of space, you can always go back and increase your space. Um, uh, that's that. Um, we can leave some of these things as default for now, and you don't have to like really, these are all optionals. You can kind of go and read about them and see if that needs to be added to your build so the most important piece is the build spec yaml file um in our case we are going to use it from our uh, code and not from um aws code build so we'll just leave this as is for now i'll come back to this later and i'll show you how this can be built out for um the yaml file um so after that we are looking at the artifacts and we want to check amazon s3 and then we have our bucket name as demo build one and it is a good idea to give the folder name here and so if i go in to my uh, the folder name in i had created a folder for this it's called demo one dash folder so i'm just going to put that in here demo one dash folder so that um, it kind of can go and retrieve it from the folder structure. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, the artifacts packaging. Uh, we want to push it as a zip file because later when we're going to deploy it into other environments, we want to keep them in a zip format. So I'm going to um, use um, zip. And then for CloudWatch, uh, we can uh, use a CloudWatch log to see how this code build uh, gets logged into our system. So I'm just going to use uh, this name, uh, the project name, uh, and give that as the name here. Um, and then just call it uh, group to keep it unique. And for this, I'm just going to call it stream. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we have kind of gone in, created the name of the project. Then we said this is where it has to picked up, be picked from, the code commit. And then we have managed the environment. We are using the AWS managed environment. Uh, we picked our operating system then it also has a role that it is assigned to and then once uh, that's done we also looked at the memory and said okay let's keep it at the lowest we don't need a lot of memory then the build spec is which i'll come to later and then the artifacts where the s3 bucket is getting stored to and then um, we also are looking at uh, having a log for this and we would and then i'm just going to go click create build project and it's going to create the project here it's it's thinking but i just wanted to just make sure yes there we go um the project has been created now. so now we created the uh code build project so let me show you the build spec yaml that i was talking about so I have this already in code commit where I have uh, pushed uh, this piece of information into code commit. So if I show you the hello world project that I have here. Um, so you see that um, I have a build spec YAML file. Uh, this is a standard build spec YAML file. It basically tells you the different faces of your um, build process so I have like a pre-build um, and the pre-build stage I'm really not doing anything then in the build stage is where I'm running my maven command which is uh, maven install in the post build uh, I don't have a whole lot that I'm doing and then in the artifacts is where I'm saying this is where the uh, 
what file or the jar file would be put. I'm going to give it as a wildcard so that the system picks it up by itself and I don't have to specify the path. Um, this seems to uh, work uh, most of the time rather than trying to specify the path. So I just leave that as is. The other thing that you need to do is the runtime version. Um, you have to specify because we specified as standard image uh, 2.0. In our image and code build, uh, you have to specify as an open JDK 8. Um, so these are the only parameters that you need for uh, build spec. And if you want to see, uh, this is where it's in my local. And I push this into code commit. So just to give you a reference of where this is coming from. So just wanted to mention that and then see what happens. It may or may not work. Let's try to build it and we say start build so you can see the logs coming in here it will also be there in CloudWatch which we can take a look later um, so it's it basically said it submitted the first phase is done it's going to run all the other phases and then so I'm looking at the phase progresses along. It will show you the different phases here. This is provisioning is basically it's provisioned um, the environment for me uh, to kind of uh, download things. And then it's downloading uh, it from uh, code commit. Um, and then it's installing the uh, build. And then it goes further down in the post build request. It does the upload of the artifact and then it's uh, completed. So I want to show you a few more things here in the uh, code build. Let's uh, look at that uh, build that we ran and uh, let's uh, step through each one of those tabs um, to get an understanding of what we have here. Um, so we saw the view artifacts that takes you to the S3 bucket. View logs will take you to the um, CloudWatch log and it will uh, redirect you here and show you the build that ran. It has a test that it uh, ran. Um, uh, it did the build and then uh, it finally completed the uh, build process. So this kind of gives you a uh, idea of what this build did actually. I, I also just wanted to show you that it ran a unit test in this process. Uh, so this is what the actual uh, code build process did right now. And uh, from here, we let's go back into uh, the code build again. Um, and uh, I showed you the artifacts uh, let's see what else can I show you we are not done any retry so if you go back to the view artifacts it takes you to the s3 bucket and I just wanted to show you the uh, build uh, where it does this um, uh, and uh, it basically has the versioning of the older build to the newest one and that's pretty cool like we can keep versioning them and um, it key build is to first go ahead and uh, build the code build project we saw the configurations a little bit more of a configuration that had to be done like a lot of these things had to be configured the project configuration source environment build spec artifact and logs um, uh, but it's uh, not too difficult uh, there's a lot of uh, information on this on AWS uh, documentation so you can take a look at that uh, but overall it's still a pretty straightforward process um, you just need a handful of configuration to get this running um, it depends on your individual projects or your projects in the company for what you need to do but at least this is a start so I want to end this video here and hopefully this was helpful and I will do the uh, next uh, series, which is the uh, uh, code deploy. Uh, that will uh, come up shortly. Have a great day.